Let's welcome uh, Mr. Rahul uh, Kanodia, who is the vice chairman as well as CEO at the company. Uh, hi, Mr. Kanodia. Thanks so much uh, for joining in and congratulations on a solid set of numbers. I saw the stock rallying in Friday. Today as well, off the blocks, the stock was off in a flash. The street is looking forward to hearing from you. Let's get straight to the numbers then. Revenue growth has been very, very good. If I look at it, mm -hmm. quarter four, you've done more than 30% growth. And for the year, you outbeat your guidance of around 15%. You gave more than 21% odd. My question to you is, what kind of a revenue growth can you guide for in FY24? And also guide us with the margin band. Because out there as well, you've seen a good improvement, both on a sequential basis, as well as on a year-in-year -year basis. Go ahead, sir. Two numbers. Yeah, on, on the revenue front, given the headwinds that the industry is uh, potentially facing, I expect that we should be in the 14 to 15 percent growth uh, next year as well. Uh, on the margin front, we will certainly maintain the margin. We are, of course, working hard on improving it. So we will certainly maintain it, if not improve it, uh, in about the 1 percent range next year. Uh, what and do you this mean, year we closed uh, out at about 16.6, so we're looking at about 16 to 17 and a half for next year. All right, 16 to 17 and a half percent for the entire year. So basically what you're planning to maintain it at is FY23 full year levels, which is 16 and a half percent and not the fourth quarter levels, which is close to 20 percent, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, because, take that uh, point. We do anticipate headwinds in the industry. You do anticipate headwinds in the industry. So let's talk about that itself. 14 to 15 percent growth is what you've guided for with margins being around uh, the same levels as FY23, 16 to 17 and a half percent. BFSI, almost 25% of your sales come in from there. What kind of headwinds do you foresee there? What kind of growth do you foresee in this vertical? And while you're at it, do also tell us about the deal wins that you saw in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so our deal wins in the fourth quarter went up by about 25% over Q3. Uh, so that's okay. very healthy. Our pipeline remains extremely strong. So as such, in terms of our operations, we don't see uh, any major slowdown. Having said that, oh. you do see the headwinds in the industry. So in anticipation of how the industry is responding, uh, one expects that there could potentially be a slowdown. But as far as data matrix is concerned, we are not seeing any slowdown in our current pipeline or the deal plans. That okay. remains extremely first, robust. Okay, the first nine months, you did about $57 million worth uh, new businesses. Just wanted yes. to understand what was the new businesses in the fourth quarter. You said it's up 25% quarter on quarter. Can you give us uh, an absolute number? So, yeah, so so the actually the new business is a little chunky in our case because we do work with uh, automatic fare collection projects and they tend to be uh, chunky and they spike a certain number. Uh, but overall, we had about a $20 million closure uh, in Q4. And this does not include those chunky deals. So once, or, once or twice in a year, we have these AFC deals that come through, which could be anywhere between 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Okay, all right. Uh, so if you could tell us, what is the current cash in your books? I think it was around 450 crores as of the last quarter. Four, four what's, what's 498. 498 what's crores. The, 498 crores, so nearly 500 crores. Or what do you want to do with it? Your market capitalization is uh, around 2,200 crores. So close to around 23, 24% of your market cap is available in cash. Do you want to return some wealth to shareholders or do you have some inorganic growth on your mind? Are you on the prowl? We, we are in dialogue with some companies for inorganic growth. Uh, of mm -hmm. course, they've not closed yet, but yes, we are in dialogue with a couple of companies for what could be the, What could the potential size be? Are you looking to spend the entire 500 crores? Could it be in the vicinity of a couple of hundred crores? Could you tell us uh, what could the deal size be or what could the revenue potential uh, you're looking at from these companies that you're currently in talks with? Yeah, the acquisition targets could range anywhere from 20 million to 50 million dollars. Uh, okay. In terms of consuming all the 500 crores in, in acquisitions, that's not a good idea. Uh, because if the industry is going to face some headwinds, then you need a reserve. Uh, so we will certainly maintain a healthy cash balance, but the acquisitions would be in the range of about 20 to $50 million in so the next year. Uh, so approximately 160 to around 240 uh, crores out. Half of that money, a uh, little less than that. Well, 50 million is about 400 crores. All right. Right. So, you know, uh, just wanted to understand another thing as well. Uh, you get a fair amount of your revenue from the education sector. Um, at last reckoning, it was close to around a fifth of your revenue coming in from there. Um, yeah. There have been some negative news over, uh, you know, this space, the ed tech space over the weekend, mm -hmm. Baiju's, etc. Uh, yeah. Could this be a growth dampener going forward? 
No, not for us, uh, because we are still uh, servicing the traditional education segment, and they are not seeing this kind of slowdown. It's the EdTech, uh, which is the Khan Academy, Baijus, and those guys who are uh, facing those issues. Uh, they're hmm, not facing right. so much of an issue in, in, in revenues. I think they're facing different kind of financial challenges and margin challenges. Uh, hmm. But since we are servicing the traditional segment, they're not going to, we're not seeing that. Okay. So that, that, that's pretty good news. And you know, I uh, earlier when you said acquisitions, I heard 20 to 30. So my calculations were skewed towards yeah. that 250 or, but it's 50 million as I see is uh, on the screen. So that's around 400 yes. crores. Uh, we get that. Mangalam, you want to follow up? Yeah, I, I had a follow up on that itself. Uh, you said that you will always look to maintain a healthy cash balance on your books. 20 to 50 million dollars yeah. is your acquisition range. Uh, yes. Can you define what the healthy cash balance should be according to you? Because right now it's close so, to 500 crores. If you go ahead and yeah. do 50 million, then you will have just about 100 crores of cash in your books. Mm -hmm. But we are generating about 200 crores of cash also per year, about 188 crores mm. this year. So we're generating okay. 200 crores, so that will add 200 crores uh, hopefully next year as well. So, so you are okay going uh, the, between two to 300 crores cash, and this is debt free. So I think that's fairly healthy for. And, mm. and, and it's not that we are acquiring it today. By the time we negotiate and close, you'll you know, probably a couple of months will go by. So a couple of months, maybe by the next quarter then we speak, we will have uh, some clarity on this one. Uh, just just uh, further thing, I mean, if you could give us a sense of what category uh, are you looking at in terms of acquisition? Is it uh, a business which you already are in and you're looking to expand? Is it a new capability? Uh, any sense? Yeah. So, so it is a business that we are already in. We are very actively looking at the hyperscalers. So in the area of hyperscalers, cloud, uh, Power apps, uh, hmm. uh, Salesforce, these are all the newer technologies that are, you know, very rapidly growing. So that's the segment that we're looking at. Interesting. You know, you already done, I think, close to 185 crores uh, last year as net profit. Uh, yeah. You know, and your market capitalization is around 2,200 crores as we speak. And in mm -hmm. all probability, this year is going to be far better than next year, going by the growth numbers you've given. So stock is still at around you know, 10, 10 times odd. Final question then mm -hmm. on pricing. What percentage of your clients have given you a price increase? If yes, could you tell us what is the quantum you have got? And are you pushing for the remaining? If yes, what's the quantum? Yeah, so I, I don't have specific numbers, but quite a few clients have given a price increase. We've gone back and negotiated. Uh, some of them happened during the middle of the year. So therefore, we'll see the benefits uh, in this financial year for sure. We are continuously pressing uh, other clients for, for revised pricing. Uh, fortunately, in the Western world, because you see the inflation uh, the way it is, many clients are amenable to the idea of uh, revising a price because they see their, their own cost base going up. Uh, so I think we're in a good place to uh, get better pricing for customers. All right. And 14 to 15 percent growth that you've guided for, uh, will that be evenly spread across digital ops, digital experience and digital tech? Or would there be some segment which will outperform and some which will underperform? I mean, if we could break no, that up into the three segments. We've had a fairly balanced growth across, so I expect it to be equally balanced. All right. Take that point. Thank you, Mr. Kanodia, for joining in, giving us all those details. Of course, the street will keep an eye out on